Hello and welcome to Space here from the Camargue in southern France, a region famous for its landscape and wildlife, and also a place that's seriously threatened by climate change because of rising sea levels. Scientists are now using satellites in order to better understand what's happening in places like this and all around our planet. Let's find out more. These sea walls on the coast of the Camargue were built in the 1980s in a failed effort to keep the Mediterranean Sea at bay. Back then, sea levels were rising at just a few millimetres per year. Now, satellites have found the waters are rising much faster than before, fed by melting ice caps and rising temperatures. The figures that we have in recent years, which come from altimetry satellites that measure the elevation of the sea level, show us that this elevation is even larger than the figures that we had beforehand. So here we're talking about 4.8 millimetres per year, which is very alarming compared to what we had before, which was around 3.4 millimetres per year. Scientists Anis Gilmami and Jean Jalbert have dedicated their careers to studying low-lying wetlands like the Camargue. The past two years they've lived through an extended drought and in the past 20 years average temperatures have risen by one degree. The changes they're observing are subtle but significant. The Camargue is a delta, so it's a very young geological structure, at most 10 or 12,000 years old, and which is made of fine sediment. This sediment continues to sink down under its own weight, and the Camargue loses about one millimetre in altitude every year, while the sea rises. Sea levels could rise by a metre, perhaps over two metres, by the end of this century. And when you think that the Camargue is about one metre above sea level, you can very well imagine the consequences. Anis works on quantifying coastal changes around the Mediterranean using Europe's Sentinel satellites and NASA's Landsat spacecraft. He's found that the coastline of the Camargue has been pushed back up to 200 metres in the past 30 years. Here you see this image from 1988 showing the coastline around here. It's an image from Landsat TM, Landsat 5. If you compare that with this Sentinel-2 image from 2018, you can see that the coastline has retreated and that the sea has advanced to the detriment of habitats like the beach and the dunes. Satellites are now the mainstay of scientific efforts to study climate change and the environment. ESA's sentinels and Earth explorers monitor ice coverage, observe deforestation, land use and soil moisture, track trends in sea level rise, temperature and salinity and even emissions from megacities. Data is managed at the agency's Earth Observation Centre near Rome in Italy. ESA has four Earth explorers and seven sentinels in orbit now, with the sentinels flying in pairs to maximise data gathering. Through the fact that we have the sister pair Sentinel 2A and 2B flying at the same time, we've chosen the orbit such that they obtain the best revisit. So we are basically able to cover the global Earth in five days without any gap by Sentinel. The frequency and consistency are very important for managing our environment and for giving the decision makers the key into their hand on what is changing, what is rapidly changing and where does mankind or humankind have to change their practices. The changes the satellites see result from higher CO2 in the atmosphere, levels which have always varied but are now far higher than ever measured before. What you see here on this graph is the CO2 concentrations uh, of the atmosphere over the last 800,000 years. And you see that these values are going up and down uh, in different uh, phases. You see on the, the blue lines here are indicating ice ages, and the orange lines here are indicating periods between ice ages or periods where it's much warmer. But you also see that over the last 800,000 years, the value was always below 300 parts per million, and suddenly, since the last century, it goes up very steep towards 400 parts per million or even beyond. Uh, and this is what we, what we have today. This is the increase of carbon dioxide uh, drastically increasing over the last uh, 100 years caused by human beings. Back in the Camargue and those who study and care for this fragile coastal environment are facing up to the reality of climate change. Anais Chéron runs the nature reserve at the heart of this French national park. 
Nature is resilient. It knows how to adapt, but it knows how to adapt in a system of evolution and in a time frame that is not at all the time frame that we have here today. Now the decision has been taken not to build new seawalls to try to protect this area. In the wild areas of the Camargue, we've decided we won't fight against the erosion of the coastline, against the effects of the sea. We've chosen instead to retreat, to beat a strategic retreat, and to adapt rather than to fight against the coastal erosion and the rise in sea levels. The Camargue is just an example of what's happening. Global sea levels have risen on average 25 centimetres since the year 1900. Levels are expected to rise considerably faster in the next century. What's happening here is happening everywhere on our planet. Here it's a few tens of thousands of people who are affected. In mainland France there are around 740,000 hectares, more than 300,000 buildings at under one metre above sea level. On the scale of the planet there are more than 370 million people who live less than five metres above sea level. There are 136 megacities, New York, Tokyo, Osaka, Lagos, which are right on the water. We're going to face major problems and we won't have the means everywhere to be able to defend these areas. So we're going to have to learn to resist in some places, but very often to retreat and to adapt to this climate change and its effects. Those changes and effects will continue to be measured and monitored by the fleet of satellites 700 kilometers above our heads. Now we're going to carry on the climate change theme with the part of the show that we call Ask Space. And we're here at ESA's Earth Observation Centre in Italy with uh, Director of Earth Observation, Josef Ashbacher. We had a question from Buolandari, who'd like to know what causes climate change. I mean, what is the cause of climate change? Very, very good question. Climate change is caused by um, atmospheric gases, carbon dioxide, methane in particular, who are trapping sunlight and therefore causing a warmer climate. And this is climate change with all its, its effects uh, on our planet, uh, on the oceans, on the land surfaces, on the atmosphere, uh, which is really causing drastic changes to our planet. We also had a question from Aidan Humani who'd like to know when the ice on the poles is going to disappear. Uh, the ice caps are already melting, uh, for example, in the northern uh, hemisphere, uh, in the Arctic, you already get uh, an ice-free northeastern passage uh, in summer, uh, where ships can go uh, from uh, Europe uh, to Asia. And it will happen that in, uh, in a few decades, uh, you have completely uh, ice-free poles. And by the end of the century, uh, it, could, uh, it could well be that the, the northern pole uh, has very little ice or no ice cover anymore. Josef, thanks very much for those insights. You can ask your questions about the universe using the Ask Space hashtag, and we'll try to answer them. And you can follow other space news on Euronews.com.